Jesus name. All right, we're going live. All right, go ahead, Deborah. Hello, happy Easter, April 12, 2020. To God be the glory. He came in like a lion and he's coming out like a lamb. Here in East Texas, we had tornadoes and storms, but it is beautiful today. We just praise him. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. What a privilege to be talking to you from the Work Hub, South Tyler, with saints and soldiers and fellowships all over the world. We're believing God that we will all be united for his kingdom and his glory in the precious blood of Jesus Christ that was shed today. But he's yes. not in the grave. He is alive. He is alive and he is risen. And that is why we're rejoicing today and dancing and singing and raising a hallelujah. We pray that every one of you are safe in your homes and that you feel his love, that you feel his blessing, and that you understand the height and the depth and the breadth of his love for you, that he shed his own blood for you and willingly gave it back to his father. Imagine that for us, for each one of us. So I pray that this day you have a personal relationship with Jesus Christ and we reach out to you and extend his hand of fellowship and love and just, just hope that you all have a blessed, safe, happy, protected holiday with families, with our priorities right, our relationship with God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the precious Holy Spirit, and our family members, and then our church family. Now we're getting our priorities right in this season. And we give you praise and honor and glory and thanks for the harvest, for the hearts that are coming to know your love, Lord, in this season of repentance, yes, this Father. season of, of bonding with yes, each other, Father. rebonding. You're reforming the bonds of love among your people, and you're changing and transforming our hearts. I thank you that it's by your blood, Jesus, that many of us have had deliverance in the, in the past couple of weeks. I myself had deliverance from 27 different entities that had family curses and things like that that come back on me trying to destroy my life. But to God be the glory. He delivers us with simple prayers as we come together in fellowship. We've got to come together. I challenge everyone to go out. If you go drive in your car, try to go in pairs. Because God is right there with you. A threefold cord cannot be broken. So we will be protected in the season as we travel and we reunite with each other and share our weaknesses and our strengths for his glory, Lord. And that's how we will be healed in these days yes. by, by confessing our faults to one another, lifting each other in prayer, loving each other with real love, agape love that only he can give as we become his ecclesia for his glory. We have 40 days now till Pentecost, 40 days that Jesus walked on the earth with the disciples. Let him teach each one of us in the word humbly. I yes. thank you for Pastor Jabbar and Janelle yes. that are teaching us the character of God, how to put that character into our hearts how to emanate that love, peace, joy, long-suffering, gentleness, kindness, mercy, forgiveness. Lord, these are things we need so desperately. Then we get the gifts of healing and those kinds of things. But we need to seek the gift giver, Jesus Christ, and our relationship with him. And then those other things, the signs and wonders and healings will follow. So let's spend these 40 days allowing the Lord to restore our hearts, walking with him personally more and more in the word and with each other for his glory. So when we come back together in 40 days for Pentecost, we will truly be able to be fellowshipping with one another once again in our congregations as God builds and realigns his kingdom. So I just thank you, Lord, this song comes up in my heart. Um, um, I can face tomorrow because he lives. I can face tomorrow because he lives. All fear is gone. And we, we know, we know, we know he holds our future for God and Christ in the living. We know he lives. Thank you. Yes. Mm. You want me to pray? Yeah. I'm trying to focus the ways I like this green, coloring their Jesus coloring this right now. Lord God, I just thank you for just the beautiful clearing that is happening right now. God, we just the opportunity to worship you in the storm. Father, we just thank you for being able to just blast the music outside and just look up into this beautiful place that you created. God, I thank you for the freedom that we can worship you, Father. Now, there are countries that are persecuted for your name's sake, and we have the liberty and the freedom to worship you. And declare your name. And we have states that are saying that church services are essential. That they are essential. We are so blessed to live in this country. Yes. And so, God, we just we thank you for your resurrecting power, Father. We just we pray, God, for you to open the eyes yes. of sleeping bones. 
people that have thought that they are believers, people that have been just comfortable in the church, people that have just been going around the mountain over and over, people that have just been doing the same mundane things, checking mark, check marking off of their Sunday, saying that they went to a religious meeting, and that that makes them feel good. Father, I pray that you you bring correction to that. Father, I pray that you illuminate that um, that apathy that we have as Americans. God, that we just We've just been sleeping, so wake up every single bone that's been sleeping, Father. Wake up every bone. Alert our minds. Tune our ears to your voice right now. The world is listening. The world is at your, at your attention right now, Father. Because of this pandemic, God, let us tune our ears to what you are saying. Thank you, Father God, for you, for this divine reset that you're doing for us to be able to hear what you are saying you are you are knocking down idols in it in just one swipe the idols are gone we can't go to the movie theaters we can't throw a party we can't go to concerts we can't go to a sports game we can't get our hair done vanity is diminished <laughs> it's yeah. a struggle right now we can't do those things <laughs> father i thank you that you tuned our attention to you to what really matters during this time so let us steward this season well let us be grateful for this trial for this season, for it produces character in us, it produces perseverance in us, and we embrace that, Father, that you have you have an uh, you have a plan for each and every one of our lives that is a good plan. You work things to good for together for those who love you, you work together good things, even in the midst of these tragedies and the, and these challenges and the things that are happening, God, it, it, at the end of the day. Um, you have the victory. You have the victory. And if we are to pass away tomorrow from some tr uh, unforeseen circumstance or foreseen, God, that already we have the victory because we know we are rested and knowing that we have eternal life with you. So God, I pray for everybody that's listening, people that don't have that security, people that don't have that peace. That, that they start asking questions. Do they really know you? Have they really entered in with you? You, you know, there are people that are going to be doing many miracles in your name, and they are going to come to you. You sing in the scriptures, and you're going to say, depart from me, I never knew you. And that word knew means to enter in as in sexual intercourse. That's, but us and the Father, it's a deep intimacy. Does he know us? Do we know him? God, thank you, God. Thank you, God, for, for opening our eyes and questioning these things. Do we know you? Father, bring us to our knees. Every bit of pride, every bit of rebellion, Father, bring it. Because you, you resist the proud, but you give grace to the humble. So let us humble ourselves before you today, Father. I thank you for, for just an opportunity just to just to gather in just a creative way today, Father. Bless everybody that is that is, is watching this, that is listening to this, that is under, that is just feeling called and drawn to this ministry and this family. I just pray that you bless them, bless the ears that are listening. Tune their ears to you, Father. Protect them, God. Protect them, Father. I pray for protection over them. I think I just I just anoint their doorposts with oil and the blood of Jesus that will protect them from every evil that may try to come. I set them apart in the name of Jesus. I pray that they believe this in faith with me. We join together in community and family. And we worship you and we say, yes, Lord, we agree. We believe that, yes, we are set apart and we trust that you are protecting us. We have faith that you are protecting us. We believe in this and it is because of our faith and our trust in you. That is where the, the power of the protection comes from. And sometimes you still give grace even when we don't believe. But I just thank you for your grace because your goodness leads to repentance. The goodness of you leads to repentance and so father we worship you and we pray that you just just move through jabbar like never before as he speaks to us today move like a powerful wind a powerful fire god in tune with your spirit nothing of him nothing of his flesh all you father all you god this is not about us this is not religion this is relationship we want to break down walls of religion we do do Easter Sundays in religious ways. We have a tradition of doing it a religious way. This is breaking out the box. We're not doing it a religious way today.
So God, help us to get real today. Get real. And so God, I just pray for your the comfort of your staff and your rod. The staff and your rod. I thank you, Father, that you're both and you're balanced. And so Father, we just open. We just give you we give you the stage right now in Jesus' name. <laughs> Go to the windows right now because the wind, the light doesn't look good because of the sunshine. Our technical directors. Father, um, Lord, I pray upon us, just come upon our minds, our thinking process, our emotions, our subconscious. Lord, it's fascinating that they did not have scriptures, they only had the Old Testament scriptures from the Torah to validate that Jesus was in fact the Messiah. But after the Holy Spirit came and they essentially tapped directly into the kingdom of God, they had nothing but instant revelation, instant revelation and testimonies. And so, Father, I pray that we would get back to that type of belief system. When we just believe in our hearts, we believe and we activate things by our faith. We activate your promises by faith. We activate your glory by faith. We activate your purpose in our lives and other people's lives by faith. Lord, all things that we do should be done through the power of the Holy Spirit. Man cannot originate any power in of himself. It has to come from you. We must be grafted onto the vine. We must be drinking from the water of life, the living water. And only Jesus and Jesus alone can do that for us. And so, Father, I pray that we go back to the ancient way. Lord, that we just abandon. Uh, as I came in this morning, Lord, I just began feeling unsettled as we were cooking up electronic equipment and wondering if this was all even necessary. Um, sometimes, Lord, I just want to be alone with you. I just want to worship you. I just want to talk about you, your glory, face to face, from person to person. And just let the essence of the Spirit just... Uh, emanate from one human being to another, Lord. So, Father, I pray that as I read this word, Lord, I don't really need to add anything to it. It is really just a history lesson of the power of the Spirit versus the power of the flesh versus 
the law. And so, Lord, I pray that we, the simplicity, we get back to the simplicity of the gospel, the simplicity of it all. Um, Lord, there's new doctrines being birthed every day. There's false religions. There's a new global church pre preaching the law once again, spreading across the globe recently, uh, trying to ensnare people once again back into the law. And so, Father, I pray that we learn to navigate this new season by way of the Holy Spirit, by way of the Holy Spirit. This was the purpose. This was the purpose of Christ, that he would leave us with the Spirit of God. And so, Lord, let us receive him with hope, with thanks, and with praise. And so, Father, let this be your voice, your voice, your will today, not my own. In the name of Jesus, amen. So, saints, I, every time I, I just, to me, I had a conversation with my dear brother Jonathan yesterday, and Stephen said, "Speaking to the mic." Uh, let me uh, turn the mic up. How about that? Is that better? Yeah. Stephen. Somebody yeah. text me on <laughs> through the <laughs> through the internet. So if you're at home, wherever you're at, uh, go to Colossians two. I'm going to read the, the Passion Translation, and I really everybody should really get their Bible out right now. Get your app out, your pat, your iPad, your your paper Bible, whatever it is. Um, these two chapters I'm going to read is essentially what I live by. And it, it covers every, I have heard so many descriptions about, so many descriptions about uh, this word. And, and I, to me, it's just plain and simple. It's not complicated. Uh, it's very straightforward. So Colossians 2.1. I wish you could know how much Wait for the park. Yeah, it's tell, just tell them that the somebody's parking. We're just waiting for uh, our brother Eric, <laughs> who, who texts me about a tornado warning at 5:45 in the morning this morning. There we go. <laughs> All right, go for uh, it. So Colossians 2:1. I wish you could know how much I've struggled for you and how much the church, uh, how, sorry, let me start over. Let me slow down a little bit. I wish you could know how much I've struggled for you and for the church of Laodicea and for the many other friends I have yet to meet. I'm contending for you that your hearts will be wrapped in the comfort of heaven and woven together in love's fabric. This will give you access to all the riches of God as you experience the revelation of God's great mystery, Christ. For our spiritual wealth is in him like hidden treasure waiting to be discovered. Our spiritual wealth is in him. So two words right off the bat. We're knitted together in love and we're knowing Christ by the spirit. For our spiritual wealth is in him, like hidden treasure waiting to be discovered. Heaven's wisdom and endless riches of revelation knowledge. Of heaven's wisdom and endless riches of revelation knowledge. I want you to know so that no one will come and lead you into error through pervasive arguments and clever words. Even though I'm separated from you geographically, my spirit is present there with you. Yeah. How in the world, this is me obviously, I'm, this is not, to, I, I paused at verse five. How is Paul present in a completely different geographic reason? If the spirit was not alive, that in essence, my friends, is a miracle in of itself. So if miracles were for that day, I just don't understand how we just keep explaining away the Holy Spirit. It, I, it's just so convenient that it's intertwined throughout the entire New Testament that everything that takes place, everything that is done, 
everything that was spoken, everything that we're taught to do in this current age is by way of the Holy Spirit. So I don't know how you can just weave him magically out of the scripture. Even though I'm separated from you geographically, my spirit is present there with you. And I'm overjoyed to see how, how disciplined and deeply committed you are because you have such a solid faith in Jesus Christ, the anointed one. Verse 6, in the same way you received Jesus our Lord and Messiah by faith, continue your journey of faith, progressing further into your union with him. Your spiritual roots go deeply into his life. Once again, spiritual roots go deeply into his life as you are continually infused with strength, encouraged in every way. He did not say, this is not a mental, emotional, this is not a doctrinal, I think, uh, truth this entire scripture is purely spiritual because it says in verse 7, your spiritual roots, it didn't say your intellectual roots. It didn't say your study skills. It said your spiritual roots go deeply into his life as you are continually infused with strength, encouraged in every way. For you are established in the faith you have absorbed and enriched by your devotion to him. Saints, the reason I read the TBT version is because the loving doctor who wrote this is thoroughly filled with the Holy Ghost. So he wrote this translation trying to stay very, very true, not to the Greek, but to the uh, original Aramaic and Hebrew, as I understand it. And in that, in, in his translation, is that in the Holy Spirit, trying to stay true to the original um, different dialects uh, and explain it in English as we use verbs. And so I just don't see how you can escape the fact that this faith is 100% rooted in spirit. 100% rooted in spirit. So we do live in, a, in an era of doctrinal truth. And I, I had a friend recently tell me uh, but we have to know what you believe. And I, I, my response to this questioning from those who think that, I think we, we reduce the argument to signs and wonders. That's the wrong argument. It's not about signs and wonders per se. It's about the living, breathing power of the Holy Spirit who has his own omniscient. He is his own person. It is what's known as the Trinitarian view. They are three in one. The Holy Spirit is unique. The, sp the scripture says he searches us. And he's the one that literally is, in a sense, uh, the best way to put it, he's like a spiritual Google. You could search the Holy Spirit and he can give you back any kingdom answer that he deems necessary that you need in real time. And so I think that we tend to search worldly views and we search worldly doctrines and we tend to listen to scientists. Scientists, I am a total absolute lover of science. I also love history. And I have to tell you that the science community is categorically wrong almost every single decade. They said the universe was shrinking. Now the universe is infinitely expanding. They said magnetism, it completely dies, the theory when it goes, wait a minute, actually it's an, a completely different type of magnetism. Uh, light reverses, and, and so they find out something new every day because science is theory, right? And so I think we apply, we try to apply human logic to the things of God. It, it doesn't work. We have to learn how to die to our human logic. This is what Janelle was referencing in the prayer. Uh, I, I wish you would have used a different word rather than sex, more like uh, intercourse possibly, but... Uh, the word translated literally means to enter in. And so, no, we do not have intercourse with the Holy Spirit. I, I just want to re-clarify that. But there is an entering in. His spirit enters into our spirit and brings our spirit man life. And thus, our spirit man brings our soul into the subjection of Christ. And that, how, that is how Christ rules over us. If you remove the Holy Spirit from the equation... You do not have the power 
to yield your soul. You cannot do it with intellectual approach. It will not work. The scripture that means warring against the flesh and the spirit, that is exactly what it's describing. And so, saints, what I've been trying to teach you and teach people since the beginning as we got here is that we must learn to walk by faith. And by faith is leaning on the spirit and the truths of the, of the spirit, knowing Christ through the spirit. So let me keep going. The scripture can stand all on its own. I don't know how you can possibly debate the scripture. Verse 8, beware that no one distracts you or intimidates you in their attempt to lead you away from Christ's fullness by pretending to be full of wisdom when they're full with endless arguments of human logic. Exactly what I just said. For they operate with humanistic and clouded judgments based on the mindset of this world system and not the anointed truths of the anointed one. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. I'm going to read that one more time. Yes. Colossians 2 verse 8. Beware that no one distracts you or intimidates you in their attempt to lead you away from Christ's fullness by pretending to be full of wisdom when they're filled with endless arguments of human logic. For they operate with humanistic and clouded judgments based on the mindset of this world system and not the anointed truths of the anointed one. And you wonder why the church is, I wouldn't say the whole church is lost. I would say that back to the prophecy that Jesus gave in Matthew chapter 24, I believe it was 27 that we read from two weeks ago, 24, Matthew 24, the, the, the prophecy that Jesus gives, he is about to uncloak all of the false teaching and he is about to expose all of the leadership that are hirelings, that are self-appointed, they are trying to lead people astray, Jesus is about to expose them. They will not be able to withstand this time that we are living in now because they have no power and they have not been anointed and not been sent forth by the Godhead. They will not have the power to sustain in this time of trial. The only people that will flourish in times of trial and pestilence are God's true children. Do you guys realize that? We will flourish in these seasons. Oh, yeah. We are not going to die. We're going to flourish in these seasons. Yeah. This is when Jesus calls us uh, together. And this is where we, we become strong. This is where he forces us to lessen our reliance on the world system and increase our reliance on him. That is the whole purpose for this season. We cannot be afraid. Every day is Easter. Every day is Easter. Every day, Jesus is resurrected. Every day, we should glorify and magnify his name and have faith in the resurrection. We should have joy. We should sing praise because we have been given new life by way of the Holy Spirit and we cannot be destroyed in Jesus' name. So... This, I'm only going to read Colossians 2. This is so powerful. I mean, this just this sums it all up. Um, now, that was uh, for he, verse 9, he is the complete fullness of deity living in human form. And our own completeness is now found in him. We are completely filled with God as Christ's fullness overflows within us. He is the head of every kingdom and the authority in the universe. If he could tell the wind and the waves to stop, then why should we be worried about uh, Our brother Eric texted me this morning, knowing we have a lot of young kids, and said, you know, brace yourself, I'll keep you in touch. He went in, so at about 545, he texted me that uh, he said, you know, get and the kids in a safe place, the weatherman saw a funnel forming uh, near Broadway. And, and then the horns were going off, the sirens, and then we, you know, we knew that was for real. We don't want to be, I'm filled with faith and not afraid of death, but I'm not an ignorant fool either. Um, I'm not gonna waste my life. It, it has to be for Christ and Christ's purpose. That I'm willing to die for. So 
anyway, I just thank you, Eric, for for looking out for our family. And um, I have been trained for warfare and the military. And uh, even in the military, they teach us when to brace. They teach us when to find cover. Uh, sometimes it's not our own things we're taking cover for from the enemy. It's our own bombs. So sometimes when headquarters calls in and he says, take shelter, we're about to drop a bomb, that's exactly what you do. You don't want to get killed by friendly fire. So I think we need to understand that I feel friendly fire. Uh, and we should not be afraid, but we also need to know when to brace in place. And, and just as we've been talking about, it's not fear if you brace in place, it's only fear when you're in fear, right? But then in that same time, the Lord will say march. We should also, if he says march, then we march. Um, so we're all, the Christians are all over the news lately about holding services and we're getting a bunch of people sick and that's what the news is always gonna predict. You know, they never televise how many souls get saved. They never televise how many homeless people get brought in the shelters. They don't televise how many people get fed. They don't televise how many people get freed from demonic imprisonment. They don't televise how many families all over the world are brought together by the bond of peace and the power of Jesus Christ. They don't televise how many children, literally children were gonna get abortions and didn't have abortions and brought new life into this earth for God to bless. They don't televise any of that, right? So they only wanna televise the negativity. So don't, don't be discouraged by that that at all so verse 12 for we've been very for we've been buried with him into his death our baptism into death also means that we were raised with him when we believed in god's resurrection power the power that raised him from death's realm this realm of death describes our former state for we're held in sin's grasp, but now, sorry, for we were held in sin's grasp, but now we've been resurrected out of that realm of death, never to return, for we are forever alive and forgiven of all our sins. Check this out. This is so powerful. A lot of people need to hear this today. He canceled out every legal violation we had on our record. And the old arrest warrant that stood to indict us. He erased it all. Our sins, our saints, our stained soul. He deleted it and it cannot be retrieved. Saints, do you realize that your arrest record has been sealed? The indictment. The indictment. There was an, there was an indictment out on every single man, woman, and child on this earth. And only the resurrection power of Christ can seal your case. He is our lawyer before God. Only he can seal your case. And just like in the law, when your case is sealed, the record is stricken. It is washed clean. Let us not try to go back into the law. This is the danger of the law. This is the danger. This is the danger of being tripped into customs and rituals that are tied to the law we are bound by no customs and no ritual we are reborn with christ period it is the messiah and the messiah alone that justifies us before god there is not one single iota not one single work that you could do that is going to change your standing with god not one not one so we need to stop pretending that we can start adding all kinds of new religious days and religious actions. It is a trap to slow you, <coughs> to slowly re-ensnare you back into the law. And I guarantee you, if you start to fall for it, you will start to feel trapped by death once again. You will think God is perceiving you solely by what you have done for him. That's all that leads to. That is legalism in its purest form. Don't get trapped by it. So for me, I really had indictments and a long arrest record. I don't know about you, but I'm free and I'm free at last. <laughs> Just like Martin Luther King said, I've been free from slavery and nothing will ever ensnare me again. So 
he deleted it and it cannot be retrieved. Everything we once were in Adam has been placed onto his cross and nailed permanently there. Let me read that again so you guys really get this. Everything we were in Adam has been placed onto the cross and nailed permanently there as a public display of cancellation. Public display of cancellation. Everything since Adam has been canceled since the initial sin. <clears throat> then Jesus made a public spectacle of all the powers and principalities of darkness, stripping away from them every weapon and all their spiritual authority and all power to accuse us. And by the power of the cross, Jesus led them around as prisoners in a process, a procession of triumph. He was not their prisoner. They were his. That's powerful. That is so powerful. I got to read that one more time. I could live off Colossians. Let's just say the, the law takes away. They take away the gospel, right? What are, what are we going to do with all these PhDs and doctorates and all this theology when it's illegal to preach the gospel? I could live on Colossians 2 alone. That's it. That's all I need. By grace, I am saved. By the work of the Holy Spirit, I am made new in him by the power of the cross. And I continually go deeper into the riches of Christ, enduring the hardship and engaging in the wisdom and the power of the kingdom of God by way of the Holy Spirit. That's all I need. That's all I need. And that's all they had, by the way. That is all they had. So, Jesus led them around as prisoners in a procession of triumph. He was not their prisoner. They were his. Now, if that's what Jesus did to the forces of darkness and we're with Jesus, why are we walking around all the time in fear and condemnation? Why are we not walking around with liberty, with joy, with peace that surpasses human understanding? Saints, let your guard down. Let your guard down and learn how to just let God love you so that he can start loving other people through you. That can only happen through transparency. It can only happen through vulnerability. I try to be vulnerable with everyone. You know why? Because I cannot be disappointed. There's nothing anybody can do. To, there's nothing anybody can do. Nothing. I'm never disappointed. Because my faith is in not science. My faith is not in the world system. My faith is not in people. My faith is in the resurrected Messiah dwelling in through people. That's what I believe in. So therefore, I believe in you, the resurrected Christ in you. And if you hold on to that, it's very hard to get disappointed. So, wow, it's so crazy that I didn't even plan this. I didn't, what I'm telling you by the Holy Spirit is exactly literally verse by verse as I'm reading it. So why would you allow anyone to judge you because of what you eat or drink or insist that you keep the feast, observe the new moon celebrations or the Sabbath? All of these were, were but a prophetic shadow and the evidence of what would be fulfilled for the body is now Christ. Don't let anyone disqualify you from your prize. Don't let their pretend sincerity fool you as they deliberately lead you into their initiation of angel worship. For they take pleasure in pretending to be experts of something they knew they know nothing about. Their reasoning, their reasoning is meaningless and comes only from their own opinions. They refuse to take hold of the true source. Do you guys realize that people still worship angels? People still, there's nothing new on this book. There's absolutely nothing new. And I want you to know that anytime that we engage in any type of belief system that leads us away from the source of Christ, it is error. I am not supposed to be, my sole job as a leader is to lead you to the source so that you can eat on your own and drink on your own. And so that once you are grafted into the vine, you will begin to reproduce on your own. That's it. It is that simple. I am not supposed to, I'm not supposed to be the cup bearer that goes and gets you water and comes back and feeds you for your whole life. That means I'm not doing my job. I'm supposed to lead you directly to the source. Any type of religion is meant to keep you from the source. That's what it does. So here we go again. I literally just read the ending of the verse. 
Uh, but we re <laughs> they refuse to take, take hold of the true source, but we receive it directly in him and his life supplies vitality into every part of his body through the joining of ligaments, connecting us all as one. He is the divine head who guides his body and causes it to grow by the supernatural power of God, not by religion, by supernatural power. For you were included in the death of Christ and have died with him to the religious system and powers of the world. Don't retreat back into being bullied by the standards and opinions of religion. For example, there's strict requirements you can't associate with that person. Or you don't eat that. Or you can't touch that. These are the doctrines of men and corrupt customs that are worthless to help you spiritually. For though they may appear to possess the promise of wisdom in their submission to God through the deprivation of their physical bodies, it is actually nothing more than empty rules rooted in religious rituals. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. How we try so hard to purify ourselves through religious through religious acts how we think that we can uh, we can gain God's affection and gain God's approval through religious acts and then we set up these stages where we worship each other on stages I don't care if you have a stage I mean if you get a large group of people they can't hear you unless you're on a raised platform I get that but when it's always light action camera on the single person, on the soul people, it, it detours from Christ. It detours from Christ. Saints, I really believe God is about to tear down this idol worship. He is about to literally bring it to its knees and everything will bow to his name. Because if we don't learn how to appreciate the simplicity of the cross, that we are made new in Christ, do you guys know that Every demonic church has priests. That every form of devil worship and idolatry has priests. They have church. Every false doctrine and false church in the world has priests. They, they all have it. So we can't, we have to be able to read between the lines. What they don't have is the power of the living God indwelling in them. They don't have the temple that has been resurrected in the spirit man of men who receive the Messiah. It says that we are now the indwelling temple. The temple was tore down and on the third day it was resurrected. On the third day the prophecy was complete when he was resurrected and it is now resurrected in us and when we receive the Holy Spirit, that is the holy place. So if we are unholy and have to be made holy through works, through works, whether it's a holy day, this is why Easter and it's become so pagan, right? I don't care if you go and bury eggs in the grass. To me, that's just having fun with your kids. I don't really associate that with the resurrection of Christ in any way, shape, or form. And neither do I Christmas or a tree or anything for that matter. To me, it is, it is, it is these are customs of the United States and Western nations mostly. Hey, I don't, it doesn't really bother me, but in no way do I associate that with gospel truth. So, and also, nor do I, it does not, it says do not forsake the gathering of the brethren. But I really think what scripture was alluding to was the community. It was the community of Christ, right? In the community of Christ, it is not, it, it is not, it, it extends beyond the four walls. It actually really means do life with one another. So, saints, I pray that let this mark this on your calendar to be a day that we begin to worship God in spirit and truth. Right? You don't want to be a CME Christian. Uh, Christmas, Mother's Day, and Easter. That's a CME Christian. Right? This is, this is, uh, I really just don't think that we are quickly approaching a time that you will not be able to withstand the fire if you do not surrender to the power of the Holy Spirit. If you do not learn how to surrender and let him build you up in every facet of your subconscious and root out all things that are not Christ and be renewed in your mind by the power of the Holy Spirit, I fear for those people, they will not know what to do. Because Jesus said himself, 
he will start tearing down the world systems. And we have so much faith, and the American bubble has finally burst. It has been penetrated, and I, that's why I think that this is friendly fire. People that need a reality check, your faith cannot be in the system, it must be in Christ. And if we do not learn to depend upon one another in all things, in all things, and, and I just, I, I, I wanted to tell you about my friend Eric because God has called him to uh, be an elder in this ministry. And the time will come will be evident to everyone uh, what the working of the Holy Spirit is, is done. And to me, what he did is just evidence of who he's really called to be. He's a watchman. He's a watchman on the tower. And so if we learn to see one another in spirit and address one another in spirit, then we can build a mighty, mighty kingdom. One that is not reliant on the world system. One that's reliant on the eternal system, the eternal kingdom. And so, Father, I pray that uh, I thank you for this adversity. I thank you for this adversity that as my wife prayed, as Deborah glorified your name, um, that these trials, these tribulations, it, that it produces perseverance and the perseverance patience and let it have its perfect work in us. Let it have its perfect work to refine us, Lord. Lord, let us be a ministry of spirit and truth, Lord, of spirit and truth. And Father, <clears throat> I also pray for all of the saints that we have gotten so comfortable bashing each other. I, I hear so much rhetoric on social media. I don't even use social media. On YouTube of doctrinal error. And, and now we're just we're so quick to slander a ministry. We're so quick to, quick to slander a leader. We have lost uh, honor. We do not honor each other anymore. And so, Lord, this is also described in your word as a prophecy that we will lose honor for one another. And so, Lord, I pray that everybody who's listening to this, Lord, that, that we learn to honor one another. We learn to honor one another, and, and you, we learn to see one another in the spirit and address one another in the spirit. And stop paying attention to things that have nothing to do with the eternal. Stop spending our energy on things trying to seek your approval. We are not orphans. We are not orphans. We are sons and daughters of the kingdom of God. Lord, teach us to rule the kingdom with you. This place is so fleeting and so temporary. And so, Father, I pray, I pray a blessing of sonship over everyone listening blessing of sonship lord that we are all carriers of the seed of the seeds of life every single one of us is an important piece of the body <clears throat> every single one of us is needed every single one of us is wanted every single one of us is valued every single one of us is being called out of the shadows not just the elect few that are praised and worshiped and so father i i pray that you bring correction and leadership Lord, that we honor the, the vessel of others. And your word even says that the unsightly parts of the body should be pushed forward and the sightly parts of the body should make an effort to step backward. And so, Father, I just thank you for all the people in this ministry that have helped us, that have blessed us, the Mike Lees that have been faithful in their giving, that kind of keep the motor, keep fueling the gas to the to the this engine and lord i thank you that we are we are a vehicle of destruction we are, we destroy lies we tear down strongholds we are a warring ministry father we are not a timid ministry we are a warring ministry lord that calls down heaven that does not fear that which you have already bound that does not fear that which you have already taken captive Lord, that we pronounce your name from the highest rooftop. We are a ministry that will be known by our love for one another. We are a ministry that will be known for impartation, that wants to see others succeed more than we want to see ourselves succeed. Lord, we will know by a ministry that honors orphans and widows and those that lack, Father. Yes. We are a ministry that will be known that is not cleaved to the world, Father. Let us be known by the way we love one another and honor one another. And so, Lord, I pray you bless every single home. 
We are not in poverty. Lord, anyone that has lack, it is a lie from hell. We lack nothing. We lack nothing. I pray that we call upon the Father of lights, that everything will be given to his children, that those who love him, he will hold nothing good back from us. And so whatever we are lacking, call out to the kingdom, for he is provision. His son, his son's life is provision. His spirit is overwhelming. It's overwhelming if we allow him. His love will, his love will just wash us and make us new. Lord, I thank you for your spirit and your presence. It just breaks me down in awe when I feel your presence upon me. And so, Father, we are not orphans. I just call out against an orphan spirit. We are not alone. We are not alone. Those who are alone in the, right now in their house, you are not alone. Just receive the gift of the Holy Spirit to comfort you. He is the comforter. Let him comfort you. Let him bring you peace. Let him bring, let his glory manifest in your home. Let him bring you the wisdom of the almighty God. Let him show you the victory of Jesus and magnify the name of Jesus. And so, Father, we, we thank you for this new season. We were built for a time such as this. We were built for a time such as this. So saints, uh, I pray that you wake up tomorrow and it'll be Easter. That you wake up Tuesday and it's still Easter. Yes. Wednesday, it's still Easter. Thursday, it's still Easter. Yes. Friday, it is still Easter. Saturday, it is still Easter. Every day is Easter. He has risen. He has always risen since that great day. So, Father, since the day of Pentecost, your spirit was released. He never left. He never left. He's here. He's dwelling. He brewed on the earth before we got here. And he is not leaving. He, this is his dominion. So, Father, give us a, this kingdom reality. This kingdom reality that everything is within grasp. Teach us your seasons. Teach us when to move, when to stop. When to slow down, when to speed up through your spirit. Lord, renew our minds, Father. We have no idea what we really carry. We have no idea what each and one of us really carry. So I just call, I just call real destiny out in all my brothers and sisters. I call out kingdom destiny. You are greater than your job. You are greater than your title and your position. You are greater than your bank account. You are greater than the gifts that you operate in. You are greater than that as well. For even those will pass away at some point. You are a joint heir of the kingdom of God. Never forget it. Learn to walk in it. Learn to believe in it. And every day will be Easter. So we thank you, Father. We thank you. We thank you for it is finished. We thank you, Jesus, for drinking the cup and perfect obedience. We thank you, Holy Spirit, for illuminating the spiritual world to us, for illuminating eternity. And, and walking us by hand into eternity. <clears throat> so, in the name of the Son, the Father, and the Spirit, we pray. Amen. 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 Good. Oh, I feel so new. Woo so brand new. Ooh, brand new. <laughs>